A few weeks ago, I saw a UFO pass in front of Mars. What's that? I didn't have a clue what it was. What is that? So I uploaded it to Facebook, thinking someone would give me a simple answer. But no, I got hundreds of different answers. So who was right? Can you see Mars? Emergency, emergency. Pads is gonna get it centered again. Thanks, Pads. Good job. That is weird. That is weird. When I first saw the UFO, I thought it was just a bit of air traffic. I can hear a helicopter. A helicopter would be much bigger, actually. I'm, like, massively zoomed in. But at this image scale, a plane would be way too big. Look at that, to be our UFO. What is that? What is it? What is it? What is it? Whatever it is, it's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is upload it and check out what you guys think. Of course, someone will have the explanation. So I leave it up to you guys. Booyah! Yes, you guys thought it was cool too. 32 and a half thousand views, 104 shares, and hundreds, probably actually, thousands of comments. It has gone a bit mad. I don't have access to all of them. I, like, wow, I'm blown away. Okay, blimey. Let's have a look at some of the comments then, shall we? One explanation was very popular. I'm not gonna say it was aliens, but it was aliens. I was surprised that aliens wasn't top of the list. Here are the top eight suggestions in order of popularity. Well, before we find out which one is right, if any of them are, why don't we have another look? And if you're feeling brave, why don't you write in the comments what you think it is? My favourite is weather balloons. So let's see who got it right. At the top of the list, one of Mars's moons. And to find out if it is, let's take a little trip to Mars. This is actual footage of the sun setting as taken by the Curiosity rover. Now when the sun sets, Curiosity gets a bird's eye view of Mars's moons. Here it caught Phobos, 24 kilometers wide, passing below its little sister, Deimos, just 12 kilometers wide. Now I've got a feeling those are just too little to be our UFO. And if we pull back to a Hubble's eye view, we see Phobos peeping out round the back of Mars, and yeah, it's way too small, way too small to be our UFO. But then, some clever bods thought maybe it could be the shadow of one of these moons on the Martian surface. Interesting idea. As it happens, Curiosity has been engulfed by the shadow from one of these moons. The camera on its mast looked up and caught this, Phobos eclipsing the sun. This is a Martian eclipse. But could the shadow cast by this eclipse be our UFO? Well, looking at the footage, Mars being 7,000 kilometers wide, I'd say the shadow would have to be about 700 kilometers wide. And as during an eclipse on Earth, our ginormously massive 3,500 kilometer wide moon only makes a 3,500 kilometer wide shadow, then you gotta say that Phoebos, at just 24 kilometers wide, is no way gonna be able to make a 700 kilometer wide shadow. So I'm afraid this idea is dead. Next. It's a bird. You can clearly see the wings flapping as it goes by. Someone else can see the wings flapping. Don't take my word for it, they say. I have only been doing amateur astronomy for 45 years. 
One in ten of you thought it was a bird. Let's find out if you were right. Here we have a robin built by my daughter for the dress up an egg competition. I think this should have won. So is our robin the right kind of size to be the UFO? Okay, there is a pretty cool way of figuring it out. We already know that if the UFO were a shadow on Mars, it would have to be 700 kilometers wide. 700 kilometers is the same as 70 million centimeters. Why am I telling you how big it is in centimeters? Well, just because the mass is about to get massively simple. By chance, the size of our UFO in centimeters matches how far away it is in kilometers. So if the UFO were a shadow on Mars, 70 million kilometers away, it would have to be 70 million centimeters big. And if the UFO happened to be nearer, say 10 million kilometers away, it would be 10 million centimeters big, or about the size of the Death Star. And how big would it be 10 kilometers away? Well, it would be 10 centimeters big. 10 centimeters is about the size of a bird, isn't it? So our little robin, would be about 10 kilometers away if it were the UFO. And if you follow the line of our telescope out 10 kilometers, you end up nearly three kilometers high. So would you get a robin flying three kilometers high at 10 o'clock at night? I don't think so. Next. Very probably an asteroid. 5% of you thought it could be a space rock. Hmm, asteroid, maybe. 50 years ago, it was thought by all the serious scientists that asteroids weren't a problem. And then we discovered an asteroid had hit the Earth and wiped out every land animal bigger than a shrew, including all the dinosaurs. Mm. And uh, NASA pulled up its socks and hunted all the dangerous looking asteroids that it could see in our vicinity. And as of 2018, this diagram shows all known asteroids. The blue ones are the near-Earth asteroids that could potentially hit us. Now, most asteroids bigger than 50 meters have already been discovered, so this UFO is unlikely to be one of those. But it could be 50 meters or smaller. And those asteroids still pack a fair punch. If a 50 meter asteroid was to come down, which is not a very big asteroid, over London right now and explode just there, it would wipe out everything within the M25. Discovering a 50 meter asteroid this close to Earth would be big, big news. But this probably isn't one of those because a 50 meter, 5,000 centimeter asteroid would only be 5,000 kilometers away. And at that distance, Earth's early asteroid detection warning system, ATLAS, based in Hawaii, should have picked it up. But ATLAS's three wide field telescopes may have missed a smaller asteroid. Like the 20 meter space rock that exploded 40 kilometers south of Chelyabinsk in Russia in 2013. Discovering one of these passing close to Earth would be amazing. And I'm gonna run a test to find out if it really is. So well done, those of you who thought Asteroid is still in the game. Next suggestion, second most popular overall and most popular within my astrophotography group. Now I'm expecting that these guys will have a good idea. It's a bug crawling across the sensor. End of story. This is worrying because if it is just a bug, then I'm going to be a laughing stock. It's a bug on your sensor, nothing less, nothing more. That's why it's called fake book. It's just a bug on the lens. Agreed. Oh dear, loads of geeks think it's a bug. All right, I'm going to get some bugs. In order to test the bug theory, I built a lemon trap and caught some bugs. Bug trap, there it is. I'm going to put the bugs in between my camera and my barlow. The trick of course is going to be getting these bugs in here. And I have this little telescope here, which is admittedly not the same as the one that I filmed Mars with, 
but I just don't want to put bugs in my cat and my big camera, you know? Anyway, then I'm just going to film and we're going to see if we see any distortion. The swirling air currents between my telescope and Mars caused it to distort. And because the UFO seemed to be wobbling just as much, then I thought the anomaly must be a long way away, perhaps even out in space. Go on. But if the bugs that I'm about to place inside my telescope wobble too... Ah, one's just gone. Then I've got it badly wrong. No, not with that in there. Ah, there's a leopard in there. The leopard from in here has fallen in there. Many bugs gave their lives to help solve this UFO mystery. Oh, God. I think they would have wanted me to carry on. So I set up and pointed at a guy cleaning the windows in this block of flats. While getting focus, I could see a bug's leg, some lemon juice. Oh, and there's a bug. It's a bug and it's gone. Oh, the bug's gone. Doesn't matter though, the leg's enough. Ah, oh, it's doing it perfectly. We can see that there's a little bit of a wobble in the window in the block of flats, but our bug's leg isn't wobbling at all. I mean, it seems obvious to me. If, if, you, if, if it's near the sensor, it ain't gonna be affected by atmospheric distortions and this isn't. I'm glad it's not a bug. So what else have we got? Space debris. 5% thought space junk. And look, someone sent this picture in. There's a lot of it up there. So I looked on my Skyview app and this is what I saw. One big bit of space debris was passing very close to Mars. The spent fuel cell from a Russian rocket. Could it be that? That would be cool, huh? Now in the spring, Richtenstein, the musical genius, and myself, there he is, we watched we go, Rocket Man <laughs> get launched into space. And we watched the rocket boosters come down. But not all rocket boosters come down. A lot of them are still up there. And later that night, I stayed up and I watched Spaceman floating above the Earth. And just look at that. Look at how much stuff there is floating below him. And then, I noticed this, just coming out of the sun, there, at the top, here we go, there, this is exactly what we're talking about, the spent fuel cell from an old Russian rocket, a big bit of dangerous space junk, spinning wildly at thousands of miles an hour through space. And I wouldn't be the first to bag a spent Russian fuel cell. Here's one photobombing this shot of the moon. They're about the right size to be our UFO, so space junk is staying on the list. Now my personal favourite, just 3% thought it was this. Uh, maybe a, a weather balloon? Nah, that's interesting, because you do get weather balloons that go very high. I will investigate this. And when I say investigate this, I actually mean going out onto the roof. Then scratching my chin a bit. Okay, no, come on, seriously, let's investigate. To be our UFO, a weather balloon 150 centimeters wide would have to be 150 kilometers away, which puts it at about 30 kilometers high. And weather balloons do in fact reach these altitudes. I know you'd probably like to see an alien or an asteroid at least, but I've got a good feeling about weather balloons. Well, I did have till I saw this. This is a weather balloon taken off. This is 10 minutes later. I'm, I'm fast forwarding. 10 minutes later still, do you notice? Do you see what's happening? It's rising up and another 10 minutes later. Whoa. Do you see that? Do you see it? As this balloon goes higher and higher, the uh, air pressure decreases and the balloon expands. So a balloon that starts off just 150 centimetres wide ends up about 450 centimetres wide. That changes our mass, so now it's got to be 450 kilometres away, which means it has to be at a height of 90 kilometres, and that's impossible. It would have popped at around 35 kilometres. Last on the list, and third most popular, I've had a pretty good reason for holding this one back, the satellite. One clever person even suggested which type. Geostationary satellite, Mars passed behind it. Interesting idea. This idea got me thinking of a neat little test. Because 
It's the first person to really talk about how fast our UFO is travelling. The idea that it could be a geostationary satellite. The idea that it could actually not be moving, really, and it's the Earth spinning that's moving. That's an interesting idea. Whoops. Now I haven't really been taking the idea of a satellite very seriously because on the night of the incident North Holt Branch Observatory's Guy Wells, who specialises in finding asteroids, um, he uh, got in touch with me and told me there were no satellites in the region when I was shooting. So I was like, well, it can't be a satellite. But I've just had a thought. Just because there aren't any satellites in the region doesn't mean there actually aren't any satellites in the region. And lift off of the Delta IV Heavy. This is the Delta IV Heavy. It can carry two Hubble-sized satellites into space. And this particular launch is a classified one for the NRO. NRO systems continue to ensure vigilance from above. Most websites believe launches by the National Reconnaissance Office carry spy satellites. Of Steve Agat providing launch vehicles. And they've been busy. Since 2010, a quarter of all launches of this most powerful rocket have been for the NRO. Some suggest there are now over 300 spy satellites in orbit. Not just American, but Chinese and Russian ones too. There's no question that they're up there. I don't think anyone can really argue with that. The big question for us is really one of scale. For our UFO to be a spy satellite in low Earth orbit, it would have to be twice as big as Hubble. So, too big, yeah? Well, actually, I'm not so sure. Because when I was at university, a fella came round to uh, talk about Hubble. He'd help put Hubble up. And um, he told a fun little story. At the end of a conference about Hubble's imminent launch, someone who'd been building satellites for the NRO we'll call him Mr. X, asked a question. Are you worried about the differential flexing of the solar panels? When the sun heats the solar panels, it turns out it's possible for some bits to get hotter than others, and this can cause the panels to flex. And if you've got a big old telescope, this flexure can be a big problem. So the British chap said, well, no, I, I don't know about this problem. And Mr. X said, well, you'd better take a look at that because it could be an issue. Now the inference from this is that Mr. X had already built something, some kind of big telescope and popped it up in space. And if there were Hubble-sized spy satellites up there in the 90s, then who knows what the NRO are launching on the Delta Heavy 4s this decade. So I believe it's possible there's some pretty big spy satellites up there in space. Who knows? Conjecture. So our initial list of eight has been whittled down to asteroids, space junk, Aliens still, and spy satellites. Okay, what am I doing? I am getting our telescope ready because so far we uh, haven't really narrowed down what our UFO can be, but that's about to change because we're going to do a little experiment that's going to tell us how fast our UFO is travelling. Just got to wait for it to get dark. Yeah, the moon's looking bright. This test will tell us if our UFO is travelling at the same speed as a spy satellite or a small meteor or the spent fuel cell from a Russian rocket. You see, the problem is, at the moment, we're shooting a moving target. Not, I'm not talking about the UFO, I'm actually talking about Mars. Mars is moving across the sky. Well, actually, it's the Earth that's moving. Look, there's my telescope tracking it. So um, when we take away the movement of Mars, we'll find the true speed of the UFO. It might not even be moving at all. With the Earth rotating and Mars traveling that way and the scope following it, is it possible that something floated in front of Mars? Not a bird, something else, something fairly static. It was actually the telescope, not the thing that was moving. All right, let's see how fast Mars is going. And to help me, I'm gonna use a little dust spot on the sensor. I'm gonna align Mars just to the left of it. Then I'm gonna turn off the mount. Oop. 
pulling this cord out that will stop the mount tracking and stop the mount counteracting the rotation of the earth and then we'll see Mars drift across the dust spot at its true speed I'm actually a little bit I'm actually a little bit nervous this is it here we go let's pull the plug see what we got that's strange, Mars is not moving at all. Hmm. The mount's still tracking. That didn't work. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna have to turn it off at the plug. This is it then. Can't possibly keep tracking when I turn the power off. Let's see what happens. Let's get it recording. Oh. Off. Oh, ooh. It looks like it's going the same speed as the UFO to me. What do you think? It is, isn't it? So it's not moving at all, it's the mount that's moving. This is what our UFO really looks like. It's still, and Mars is moving behind it. Okay, good, we're nailing it down. There's only a few things it could be. It can't be a small meteor or a spent Russian fuel cell because they are moving too fast. But what about this? A satellite in geosynchronous orbit 36,000 kilometers above the Earth. And up there, it would appear from the Earth to float and not move, just like our UFO. The only problem with this theory is that if our UFO really was that far up, then to match our image scale it wouldn't be a spy satellite, it would be a spy aircraft carrier sized space station. Hmm. We have been through absolutely everything and there is only one thing left on the list. So I'm going to have to call it for what it is. Aliens. <laughs> it's got to be aliens. Oh man, I really wish we'd found something else. Oops. What about balloons? A couple of people did mention them. Although there is a pretty good reason why they weren't popular enough to make it onto our initial list. A balloon like this isn't actually altogether that lightly. You see, a 30 centimetre balloon would have to be nearly eight kilometres high. And at that height, the helium is gonna take up more space, three times more space. So surely it would pop, wouldn't it? Okay, it's our last, last hope. Let's do a test. Is it possible this balloon can survive eight kilometers up there. So let's blow it up first. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. Okay, that's reasonable size, reasonable size balloon. Took 10, 10 seconds to fill it up this much. Now I can't go eight kilometers up and uh, watch the volume of this helium expand three times over as it does so and see if the balloon pops. But what I can do is put in three times the volume of helium into this balloon. So it took 10 seconds to get this big. So we need another 20 seconds more. That's three times the volume. I really don't think it's gonna happen, do you? No. All right, let's try it. Here we go. Oh, not yet. Come on. Why is it not coming out? 1,000,
I mean, what am I doing? Ooh, that was a loud bang. Wow. I wouldn't have believed it, but it did it. Wow. Now, for those of you who secretly were hoping it was an alien, or perhaps conspiracists who believe it's some kind of spy space station arc waiting to take those who know the asteroid's coming away and to safety, leaving the rest of us to perish, for those of you, I can throw a spanner into the balloon theory. It goes like this. As the balloon rises, it gets bigger. And the bigger it is, the further away it is and the higher it is. And if you do the maths, that makes this the highest flying party balloon ever. I still think this is it though. I think 28 kilometers south, a half full helium balloon got released in Croydon. It spent about an hour rising up. It floated in between my telescope and Mars. Uh, there it is. And then probably popped soon after. Not perfect, I know, but it's the best guess I've got. So well done, all of you who got it right. I certainly wasn't one of them. Whew. All right, cool. See you in the next one. So you might not be hearing from me for a bit because I've got to work. Uh, so, um, unless this goes mega viral, of course, so yeah, if you can share it, that would be amazing. In the meantime, check out our back catalogue, our astro adventures, and if you thought that photographing space was expensive, then, well, technology has caught up with us, so time to think again. <laughs>